Project 2025 is it the boogeyman? Is it the Donald Trump campaign? Is it just something that it isn't surprising if you're someone on the right? I want to go with the latter, but I'm really interested to hear what Matt Robeson of the Beyond Politics podcast, returning to the show, has to say about it. Welcome back. Oh, always a pleasure to be here. All right, episode description, I'll link his Newsweek articles, Beyond Politics podcast, and everything else he's up to. But y- your your article on, on Newsweek, I, I think I... I kind of sort of see where your perspectives are coming from on it, but I mean, what's what's your thesis on why Project 2025 is a problem, high level? It's a problem because they're saying the quiet part out loud. They're Babe Ruthing it. They're calling their shot. This is what we are going to do. We've written it out in 900 exhaustively documented pages. This is our exact plan for governing. The last time that this group wrote a plan for governing, two-thirds of it, this is their words, not mine, two-thirds of it was adopted by the Trump administration. And the stuff that is in here, I want to make a case to you. The, The Republican Party has long had a proud strain of libertarianism in it, a a, a belief in limited government, a, a fear, a suspicion of the overreach of government and the ways that government can steer resources to preferred groups. The, the criticism of DEI is this idea that identity politics has invaded our government. And it's from that perspective that I think libertarians People who who care about their civil liberties, their rights, their individual rights, and have suspicions of the government should look at Project 2025 and should be very, very afraid. I'll tell you more if you want, but that's where I'm coming from. And that makes a lot of sense. I I mean, generally speaking for me, to put it as mask off is 100% true. The the Heritage Foundation is the the organizing group that has put this together in the just ridiculously exhaustive and not user-friendly way, which is probably partly on purpose. They're they're intentionally writing a textbook, basically, for for what what conservatives should be doing. But this is what they've said forever. There is nothing outside of the norm for anything that the religious right has put together. It's always fun hearing the the arguments between the Heritage Foundation and the Mises Caucus over in the Libertarian Party and all all the the bickering that tends to happen between the the religious conservatives and the more libertarian conservatives because they disagree on a lot. And then now, and another confounding factor into all of this is the Donald Trump campaign where if you look at his campaign and what he's putting, he put out his policies the other day, I haven't had a chance to read through myself, but just by the analysis of it, they don't necessarily see eye to eye with Project 2025 either. But, but, well, hold on, but, here's my my way where we can kind of meet in the middle on this a little bit, is he's going to pick a bunch of the people the Heritage Foundation is going to put out there as the the cabinet members. There's no way around it. He's going to do it. Similar to like how we're talking about with Biden and other administrations, the cabinet does a lot. The staff that is working with a whether it's a, in the legislature or in the executive branch have a ton of responsibility of what's going on day to day with with these administrations and if he, he's getting a bunch of project 2025 oriented people in there yeah it could definitely be a problem for many people especially on the left actually all right i'll go ahead and I, i'm going to concede your point i'm going to agree with you i i think that what Trump has put out in terms of his agenda, which is called mysteriously and ominously Agenda 47, uh, um, execute Order 66. Thank you, Emperor Palpatine. That's not scary at all. Agenda 47. Um, what they've put out is it's in a series of videos and it's much more a communications product, right? Project 2025 is a governing agenda. It's a detailed governing agenda. It's an exhaustively, painfully, 900-page detailed governing agenda. It is the plan for what the administration is going to do. I think one thing you and I would definitely agree on, and any political observer would agree on, is Donald Trump is not a details guy. He could not give two you-know-whats about the details. The people who have written this, they're sweating the details. And 75% of them were senior members of his last administration and or our current senior members of his campaign. This is the A-team. This is as if three of the four members of the A-team, he took Hannibal, 
he took face and he took B.A. Baracus and they wrote his plan. So all of his, oh, I don't know, I might not do this. It, your point is right. This is what is going to happen if we have Trump. And again, I'll repeat my my claim is that I think anyone with libertarian principles should find this very, very scary. We should talk about why, but that that's my contention is that it's not just Democrats who should worry about this. It's it's anyone who believes in their own fundamental American rights. Well, the biggest bit of stupid, in my opinion, what I've been seeing with a lot of the analysis of it, though, is so especially from the left, where they they they're surprised by a lot of the stuff in this. I'm really interested to get your your opinion on this. How the hell are they surprised about 99% of the stuff that's in Project 2025 when it comes to policy, especially? The policy part is the most important part of it. I, shouldn't they know this already? <laughs> well, okay. I had to pick. It's like Maverick said to Goose in Top Gun. You're it's so a- old. I'm sorry, Matt, but I got to say it. <laughs> It's, my cultural references are, are dating me, yes. <laughs> it is a target-rich environment when you look at Project 2025. There's so much to talk about. So when I wrote about it for Newsweek, I had to boil it down. I had to pick three things. I cheated a little bit. What I tried to do is I tried to pick the things that are surprising, that are shocking, that are novel. My number two on the list was sort of a grab bag of things that are not shocking, to your point. It's pretty standard issue Republican Party stuff that, you know, some Republicans may actually see as a feature, not a bug, right? Um, Things like, we're going to get rid of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. That, you know, we could argue about that one. It's It's not shocking, to your point. This It's the other two that I'm picking on that I think are really pretty terrible. I'm going to pick number three first because I think it's the worst. I think it's, I think it's the scariest. The plan calls explicitly and in great detail into for turning both the Justice Department and the FBI into, quote, an attack dog for conservative causes, for putting our law enforcement and our courts under the direct authority of the president, people who are going to get investigated and pursued and arrested and prosecuted, that will be decided for political reasons by the president and by his henchmen. That is a police state. That is the definition of a police state. You can't tell me that anyone who lived through the Cold War, as I clearly did, and maybe you didn't, doesn't doesn't shudder at the historical echoes of that. And any libertarian should find that anathema, should find that vomitatious and something that needs to be opposed no matter what. That's just my number three. I have have others. Yeah, and I 100% agree. I mean, this is kind of the difference between, yeah, once again, this division within the right, where 100%, like, there's so much with regards to, I mean, when it comes to abortion and different things like that, with the extremes that are taken, like, it is boiling down the, the, the religious and conservative rights. ideals of what they want to have happen and we're gonna and we're we're organizing it there's uh, tons of uh, of these smaller organizations that have combined and are all part of it It, and uh, like I would kill for something like that on on the more libertarian right because but they'll never be able to do it because they can't figure out how to put together a decent statewide party in any state basically across the country no no it's very embarrassing for the libertarians it's not unless great. you talk about that the better exactly I, um, exactly but it's and that's one thing I feel like the left has really done an amazing job on with some of their organizi- organizations whether it's um, I mean Black Lives Matter is a fa- fantastic example of it where they're able to grassroots organize these huge groups where with funding from there. Americans for Prosperity has done it from the right to a certain extent, but I wouldn't say it's as mainstream of, like available like like BLM and uh, like the ACLU has basically become, in my opinion, a kind of a branch of the Democratic Party and Planned Parenthood. Like, it, it, they're varying degrees, obviously, but th- there's very little on the right that has really done as 
successful job is what the left has done. And I think this is kind of the conservative religious right attempting to finally get their act together. Well, it's I mean, that is the function that heritage has fulfilled. That's something I covered on my podcast on Beyond Politics with the guy who literally wrote the book about heritage and about the role that they have played in the Republican Party and in the rightward march of the Republican Party over the last five decades. One thing that stands out to me um, I, I I know I, I didn't get to my number one on my list. We can put that in the parking lot, talk about it or not. One thing that does get to me, though, is you pointed out correctly that there's a lot in Project 2025 that's not that shocking, right? It's kind of standard issue, red meat for the base stuff that you would get from the Republican Party. What bothers me about it is it's not what 85% of America wants. I ran into, right before you and I started recording this show, ran into a friend of mine from around town. Our daughters both play basketball. And her husband, um, he and I have great conversations. He's in local politics. He's a, he's a small businessman. And he's a dyed-in-the-wool Trump supporter. And I am not. But when we start talking about issues, we agree on, like, 85% of it. There is a middle ground that we agree on when it comes to people's fundamental rights. Like talk about talk about a hot button issue, button issue in America. Talk about trans issues, trans rights. He and I actually agree on most of it. Like everyone should be treated equally under the law. Everyone should be treated with dignity and respect, no discrimination whatsoever. And you know, I mean, if if you can, and that's by the way, the law. It's the law of the land, and he's cool with it. You know, and and you go down the line: abortion, hot button cultural issues, fiscal issues. There's much more that unites us than that divides us. And what bothers me in part about 2025, the Project 2025 plan, is that it's just all extreme stuff to the right, and you don't see that in the democratic party sure there's there's the left-wing crap out there there's you know there, there's the green new deal and defund the police stuff that runs around but you know what democrats have done their level best to kick that stuff to the curb to try to sideline it they that's why we nominated joe biden in the first place because he was the most anodyne mainstream centrist type we could get and so i just it, it it bugs me because I honestly, truly yearn for a Republican Party that is more along the lines of my friend from around town, where it's like, yeah, we disagree on some stuff, but we can have we can have reasonable conversations here. Yeah, I mean that's kind of where I mean this is not a conversation we can have right now. It's a we, it's a whole other conversation entirely. Is the 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 finding middle ground that right-wing populism has enabled with with Trump and everything with that the reason why he was able to get so many of the Obama supporters who switched over to what he was doing it's like there there's a lot of of middle of the road stuff that i wish the Trump campaign would lean harder into but he exists in this it, like his base is very much of the right. Like the thirty percent Republicans that are hardline Trump supporters are going to have a hard time really find agreeing with the meat in the middle is, and just say, "Oh, Trump's just saying things," as opposed to trying to find solutions in the long run. And I, I mean, honestly, I don't think we're going to find those middle of the road conversations for another three years or so, maybe seven years. We'll see ultimately. But I, I don't know. I, this is I mean, this is part of the reason why I like doing the show here is kind of. Hopefully it opens the door. Some people maybe consider like, "Hey, we, we need to we need to look beyond just these hardline I, I, ideolo ideologically driven groups and kind of we gotta we gotta figure out a solution here as opposed to what we're doing right now." Well, I'll give you an example. If people like that kind of thing and they like your show, this is what I try and do on Beyond Politics. I mean, I'm unabashed a member of the Democratic Party, but my last guest last week was Brian Riedel, who is the budget guy for Mitt Romney. All right. He works for about as right wing a think tank as you can get the Manhattan Institute. Look it up if you're not familiar with it. And we were talking about the budget and taxes. And by the way, he trashed Donald Trump's tax plan, trashed it as utter garbage. That's horrible, horrible for the middle class, just like a massive tax increase for working people, just insanely bad for his biggest supporters. But here's the thing. In the midst of that conversation, he said, look, um, the reality is 
Social Security and Medicare face a $104 trillion shortfall over the next 30 years. We got to deal with that, right? And there are solutions to be had out there. And he, he said, Here, here's one. This is nerdy, but I'll give it to you. He said, how about if you earn as a retiree, as someone who's getting Social Security, okay? You're getting Social Security right now. Let's say you're 70 years old. And overall, all of your income adds up to more than $100,000 in a year or $200,000 if you're a couple. That year, you don't get a COLA. You don't get a cost of living increase. So you don't get that bump up of a few percent in your Social Security benefit for the next year if you're over $100,000. How about that? Just that alone would knock out 10% of that debt, of that massive debt that's hanging over our kids. Well, that's a solution that I could get behind, right? And he's got a menu. He's got a whole list of ideas that we could talk about. And that's the kind of thing. That's that's the con- conversation I like to have. And that's that's why I have conservative experts on my show because they bring up ideas and there are there are solutions we could come to if we could kind of get ourselves away from the total red meat, rightest of the right crap that you see in Project 2025. All right. Matt Robeson, Beyond Politics Podcast. Thanks so much for joining me this week. And uh, definitely check out the previous video on, on the channel where uh, I spoke to him about the current state of the uh, campaign, the Democrat campaign as of recording July 24th. Not to speak for whatever happened the day it released, two seconds after the video released. Everything might be up in the air and on fire for all I know, but I appreciate you joining me again. My pleasure, and I'm going to go watch some TikTok videos so I can have updated cultural references for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You do that. All right, NewEnglandTake.com. Be sure to like and subscribe. Check out what we're doing over there. Uh, NewEnglandTake.com. You'll find also some of the articles I've been putting out recently, which have been in various newspapers across the state. And uh, definitely, always, like and subscribe. Do all the YouTube nonsense down there while you're here. I appreciate it, and we'll talk to you soon.